Hi everyone, welcome to Bite Vigor. Today, we're diving into Breadth First Search, or BFS, a fundamental algorithm for searching and traversing graphs and trees. It's widely used in pathfinding problems and beyond. Mastering BFS will not only strengthen your understanding of data structures, but also prepare you for common algorithm questions in coding interviews. Imagine you're in a city looking for the nearest gas station. Instead of randomly picking a road and following it to the end, you'd first check the streets around you to see if there's a gas station nearby. If you don't find one, you expand your search to the next level of streets, then the next, until you locate one. This method of searching from nearby to farther locations is the core idea behind BFS. BFS explores a graph or tree level by level, visiting all adjacent nodes first before expanding outward until it finds the target. Now, let's use a binary tree as an example to demonstrate how BFS works. In BFS, we use a queue to manage the traversal order. A queue follows the first in, first out principle, ensuring that we always visit the closest nodes first before moving to deeper levels. On the left side of the screen, you'll see the Python implementation of BFS. We use the deke from the collections module to efficiently handle our queue operations. Now let's walk through the BFS process using the binary tree on the right side of the screen. First, we enqueue the root node, A. Then, we enter a loop where we dequeue the first node, visit it, and enqueue its children. We start by removing A from the queue and visiting it. Next, we add A's children, B and C, to the queue. Now, our queue contains B and C. Next, we dequeue B. Visit it and enqueue its child node, D. The queue now holds C and D. Then we dequeue C. Visit it, and enqueue its children, E and F. Now the queue contains D, E, and F in that order. Moving forward, we dequeue D. Visit it. And since it has no children, the queue remains the same. We then dequeue E. Visit it and enqueue its children, G and H. Now, the queue contains F, G, and H. Next, we dequeue F. Visit it. And since it has no children, the queue remains unchanged. Finally, we dequeue G and H one by one and visit them. At this point, the queue is empty, meaning the traversal is complete. This process clearly shows that BFS explores nodes level by level, each time we visit a node, we enqueue all of its children. This ensures BFS expands outward until the entire tree is fully traversed. Now that we've learned both Depth First Search, DFS, and Breadth First Search, BFS, let's compare them. DFS dives as deep as possible into a structure before backtracking, while BFS explores level by level, expanding outward. DFS is useful for exploring all possible paths making it ideal for backtracking algorithms. In contrast, BFS is the go-to choice for finding the shortest path in an unweighted graph. DFS relies on a stack, often implemented with recursion, whereas BFS uses a queue and is typically implemented iteratively. Ultimately, the choice between DFS and BFS depends on the specific problem you're solving. Now let's talk about the complexity of BFS. For a binary tree, the time complexity is O n, where n is the number of nodes, since each node is visited once. For graphs, the time complexity is O v plus e, where v is the number of vertices and e is the number of edges, because BFS processes all nodes and edges. The space complexity depends on the maximum number of nodes stored in the queue at any given time. In the worst case, for a complete binary tree, the queue may hold an entire level of nodes, reaching O n. For a balanced binary tree, the queue size is usually proportional to the tree's height, leading to O log n space complexity. For graphs, the worst case space complexity can be O v, depending on the structure of the graph. BFS is widely used in various applications. In shortest path problems, BFS guarantees the shortest path in an unweighted graph, making it useful for maze solving, network routing, and social network friend recommendations. It is also used for connectivity checks, 
such as determining whether a graph is connected or counting the number of connected components. In artificial intelligence and search problems, BFS is commonly applied in state space search, including solving the eight puzzle problem and planning robot navigation paths. That's all for today. If you ever encounter BFS-related problems in interviews or development, I hope this video proves helpful. See you next time.